out of the voiceless mystery of the past, in a present ignorant of forgotten bonds, these spirits met upon the roads of time. Yet in the heart, their secret conscious selves at once aware grew of each other, warned by the first call of a delightful voice and a first vision of the destined face. As when being cries to being from its depths, behind the screen of the external sense and strives to find the heart disclosing word, the passionate speech revealing the soul's need, but the mind's ignorance veils the inner sight. Only a little breaks through our upmade bounds so now they met in that momentous hour, so utter the recognition of the deeps, the remembrance lost, the oneness felt and missed. Thus Satyavan spoke first to Savitri. O thou who comes to me out of times as silences, Yet thy voice has awakened my heart to an unknown bliss. Immortal or mortal, only in thy frame. For more than earth speaks to me from thy soul. And more than earth surrounds me in thy gaze. How art thou named among the sons of men? Whence hast thou dawned, filling my spirit's days, brighter than summer, brighter than my flowers, into the lonely borders of my life? O oh, sunlight, mold it like a golden maid. I know that mighty gods are friends of earth. Amid the pageantries of day and dusk, Long have I travelled with my pilgrim soul, moved by the marvel of familiar things. Earth could not hide from me the powers she veils. Even though moving mid an earthly scene and the common surfaces of terrestrial things, my vision saw unblinded by her faults. The Godhead looked at me from familiar scenes. I witnessed the virgin bridles of the dawn behind the glowing curtains of the sky, all vying in joy with the bright morning's steps. I paced along the slumberous course of morn or the gold desert of the sunlight crossed, traversing great wastes of splendor and of fire, or met the moon gliding amazed through heaven in the uncertain whiteness of the night, or the stars marched on their long sentinel routes, pointing their spears through the infinitudes. The day and dusk revealed to me hidden shapes. Figures have come to me from secret shores, and happy faces looked from ray and flame. I have heard strange voices cross the ether's waves, the centaur's wizard song has thrilled my ear. I glimpsed the apsaras bathing in the pools and saw the wood nymphs 
peering through the leaves. The winds have shown to me their trampling lords. I have beheld the princes of the sun burning in thousand pillared homes of light. So now my mind could dream and my heart fear that from some wonder couch beyond our work, our air, risen in a wide morning of the gods, thou droopst thy horses from the thunderous worlds. Although to heaven thy beauty seems a light, much rather would my thoughts rejoice to know thy mortal sweetness smiles between thy lips and thy heart can beat beneath a human gaze and thy aureate bosom quiver with a look and its tumult answer to an earthworn voice. If our time vexed affections thou canst feel, earth's ease of simple things can satisfy if the glance can dwell content on earthly soil and this celestial summary of delight, thy golden body, daily with fatigue, oppressing with its grace our terrain, while the frail, sweet, passing taste of earthly food delays thee and the torrents are leaping wine. The same. Let the journey cease. Come down to us. Close is my father's creepered armitage, screened by the tall ranks of these silent kings, sung to by voices of the Europed choirs, whose chants repeat transcribed in music's notes the passionate colored lettering of the bowels and fill the hours with their melodious cry. Amid the welcome hum of many bees invade our honeyed kingdom of the woods. There let me lead thee into an opulent life. Bare, simple, is the sylvan hermit life. Yet is it clad with the jewelry of earth. Wild winds run, visitors miss the swaying tops. Through the calm days, heaven's sentinels of peace, couched on a purple robe of sky above, look down on a rich secrecy and hush and the chambered nuptial waters chant within. Enormous, whispering, many formed around, high forest gods have taken in their arms the human hour, a guest of the century pomps. Apparelled are the morns in gold and green. Sunlight and shadow tapestry the walls to make a resting chamber fit for thee. A while she paused, as if hearing still his voice, unwilling to break the charm, then slowly spoke, musing. She answered, I am Sabitri, princess of Madra. Who art thou? What name musical on earth expresses thee to me? What trunk of kings, what are my fortunate streams, has flowered at last upon one happy branch? Why is that dwelling in the pathless wood, far from the deeds thy glorious youth demands, 
haunt of the anchorites and urge the wilder broods, where only with thy witness self thou roamst in nature's green, unhuman loneliness, surrounded by enormous silences and the blind murmur of primeval calms. And the Sattvan replied to Savitri, In days when yet his sight looked clear on life, King Dimatsena once, the Shalva, reigned through all the tract which from behind these tops, passing its days of emerald delight, in trusting converse with the traveller winds, turns, looking back towards the southern heavens, and leans its flank upon the musing hills. But equal fate removed her covering hand. A living night enclosed the strong man's paths. Heaven's brilliant gods recalled their careless gifts, took from blank eyes their glad and helping ray and led the uncertain goddess from his side. Outcast from empire of the outer light, lost to the comradeship of seeing men, his sojourns in two solitudes, within and in the solemn rustle of the woods. Son of that king, I, Sattvan have lived contented, for not yet of thee aware. In my high people the loneliness of spirit and this huge vital murmur kin to me, asked for the vastness, pupil of solitude, great nature came to her recovered child. I reigned in a kingdom of a nobler kind than men can build upon dull matter's soil. I met the frankness of the primal earth. I enjoyed the intimacy of infant God. In the great tapestry chambers of her state, free in her boundless palace I have dwelt, indulged by the warm mother of us all, Reared with my natural brothers in our house, I lay in the white, bare embrace of heaven. The sunlight's radiant blessing clasped my brow. The moonbeams a silver ecstasy at night kissed my dim weeds to sleep. Earth's morns were mine. Lured by faint murmurings with the green-robed hours, I wandered, lost in woods, prone to the voice of winds and waters, partner of the sun's joy, a listener to the universal speech. My spirit satisfied within me knew, God-like our birthright, Luxury to our life, whose close belongings are the earth and skies. Before fate led me into this emerald world, that roused by some foreshadowing touch within, an early prescience in my mind approached the great dumb animal consciousness of earth, now grown so close to me, who have left old pomps to live in this grandiose mama, dim and vast. As if to a deeper country of the soul, transposing the vivid imagery of earth, 
through an inner sea and sense, a awakening key. A vision dispel pursued my boyhood's hours. All things that the eye had caught in colored lines were seen anew through the interpreting mind and in this shape it sought to seize the soul. An early child God took my hand that held, moved, guided by the seeking of his touch, bright forms and hues which flayed across his sight, limbed upon page and stone, they spoke to men. High beauty's visitants, my inmates were. The neighing pride of rapid life that roams, wind maned through our pastures, on my seeing mood, cast shapes of swiftness, drooping spotted deer against the whisper sky became a song of evening to the silence of the soul. I caught for some eternal eye the sudden kingfisher flashing to a darkling pool, a slow swan silvering the azure lake, a shape of magic whiteness sailed through dreams. Leaves trembling with the passion of the wind and wandering wings nearing from infinity lived on the tablets of my inner side. Mountains and trees stood there like thoughts from God. Branked butterflies, the conscious flowers of air, the brilliant long bills, in their vivid dress, the peacock scattering on the breeze his moods painted my memory like a fresco wall. I carved my vision out of wood and stone. I caught the echoes of a word supreme and mittered the rhythm beats of infinity and listen through music for the eternal voice. I felt a covered touch. I heard a call, but could not clasp the body of my God or hold between my hands the world mother's feet. In men I met strange portions of a self that sought for fragments and in fragments lived. Each lived in himself and for himself alone and with the rest joined only fleeting ties. Each passioned over his surface joy and grief nor saw the eternal in his secret house. I conversed with nature, mused with the changeless stars, God's watch fires burning in the ignorant night, and saw upon her mighty visage fall a ray prophetic of the eternal sun. I sat with the forest sages in their trance. There poured awaking streams of diamond light. I glimpsed the presence of the One in all. But still they are lacked the last transcendent power, and matter still slept empty of its law. The spirit was saved, the body lost and mute, lived still with death and ancient ignorance, 
Dim consent was its base, the void its fate. But thou hast come, and all will surely change. I shall feel the world mother in thy golden limbs, and hear her wisdom in thy sacred voice. The child of the void shall be reborn in God. My matter shall evade the inconscient trance. My body, like my spirit, shall be free. It shall escape from death and ignorance. And Sabitri, musing still, replied to him, Speak more to me, speak more. O Sattva, speak of thyself and all thou art within. I would know thee as if we had ever lived together in the chamber of our souls. Speak till a light shall come into my heart and my moved mortal mind shall understand what all the deathless being in me feels. It knows that thou art he, my spirit has sought, amidst earth's thronging visages and forms across the golden spaces of my life. And Satvan, like a replying harp, to the insistent calling of a fruit, answered her questioning, and let stream to her his heart in many-colored waves of speech. O golden princess, perfect Savitri, more I would tell than failing words can speak. Of all that thou hast meant to me, unknown, all that the lightning flash of love reveals. In one great hour of the unveiling gods, even a brief nearness has reshaped my life. For now I know that all I lived and was Move towards this moment of my heart's rebirth. I look back on the meaning of myself, a soul made ready on earth's soil for thee. Once were my days like days of other men. To think and act was all, to enjoy and be. This was the width and height of mortal hope. Yet there came glimpses of a deeper self that leaps behind life and makes her act its scene. A truth was felt that screened this shape from mine, a greatness working towards a hidden end and vaguely through the forms of earth there looked something that life is not and yet must be. I groped for the mystery with the lantern thought. Its glimmerings lighted with the abstract word, a half-visible ground and travelling year by year it mapped a system of the self and God. I could not leave the truth it spoke and thought. I turned to seize its form in visible things, hoping to fix its rule by mortal mind, imposed a narrow structure of world law upon the freedom of the infinite, a hard form skeleton of outward truth, a mental scheme 
of a mechanic power. This slide showed more the darknesses unsearched. It made the original secrecy more occult. It could not analyze its cosmic veil or glimpse the wonder worker's hidden hand and trace the pattern of his magic plans. I plunged into an inner seeing mind and knew the secret laws and sorceries that make of matter mind's bewildered slave. The mystery was not sought, but deepened more. I strove to find its hints through beauty and art, but form cannot unveil the indwelling power. Only it throws its symbols at our hearts. It evoked a mood of self, invoked a sign of all the brooding glory hidden in sense. I lived in the rain, but faced not to the sun. I looked upon the world and missed the self. And when I found the self, I lost the world. My other selves I lost and the body of God. The link of the finite with the infinite. The bridge between the appearance and the truth. The mystic aim for which the world was made. The human sense of immortality. But now the gold link comes to me with thy feet and his gold sun has shone on me from thy face. For now another realm draws near with thee and now diviner voices fill my ear. A strange new world swims to me in thy gaze approaching like a star from unknown heavens. A cry of spheres comes with thee and a song of flaming gods. I draw a wealthier breath and in a fierier march of moments move. My mind transfigures to a rapturous seer, a foam leap traveling from the waves of bliss has changed my heart and changed the earth around. All with their coming fields, air, soil and stream, wear bridal raiment to be fit for thee, and sunlight grows a shadow of the hue. Because of change within me, by thy look, Come nearer to me from the car of light. On this green soil, disdaining not our soil, for here are secret spaces made for thee, whose capes of emerald long to screen thy fall. Will thou not make this mortal bliss thy sphere descend? O oh, happiness, with the mole gold feet, and rich arts flows upon whose sleep we lie. O oh, my bright beauty's princess Sabitri, by my delight and thy own joy compelled, enter my life, thy chamber and thy shrine, in the great quietness where spirits meet, led by my hushed desire into my woods, let the dim rustling arches over the lean, one with the breath of things eternal deep. Thy heart beats near to mine, till there shall leap, enchanted from the fragrance of the flowers, a moment 
which all mamas shall recall and every bird remember in its cry. Allured to her lashes by his passionate words, our fathomless soul looked at him from her eyes. Passing her lips in liquid sounds, it spoke. This word alone she uttered and said, Oh, oh Sattvan, I have heard thee and I know. I know that thou and only thou art he. Then down she came from her high carven car, descending with a soft and faltering haste, her many-hued raiment glistening in the light, hovered a moment over the wind-stirred grass, mixed with the glimmer of her body's ray, like lovely plumage of a settling bird. Her gleaming feet Upon the green gold sword scattered a memory of wandering beams and lightly pressed the unspoken desire of her, cherished in her too brief passing by the soil. Then flitting like pale, brilliant moths, her hands took from the silvan verges sunlit arms a load of their jeweled faces, clustering swarms, companions of the springtime and the breeze. A candid garland set to its simple forms, her rapid fingers topped a flower song, the standard movement of a marriage hymn. Profound in perfume and immersed in hue, they mixed their yearnings, colored signs, and made the bloom of their purity and passion one. A sacrament of joy in treasuring palms she brought, flower symbol of her offered life. Then with raised hands that trembled a little now at the very closeness that her soul desired, this bond of sweetness, their bright union's sign she laid on the bosom coveted by her love, as if inclined before some gracious god who has out of his mist of greatness shone to fill with beauty his adorer's hours, she bowed and touched his feet with worshipping hands. She made her life his world for him to tread and made her body the room of his delight. Her beating heart a remembrance of bliss. He bent to her and took into his own their married yearning, joined like folded hopes. As if a whole rich world suddenly possessed, wedded to all he had been, became himself an inexhaustible joy Made it alone, he gathered all Savitri into his class. Around her, his embrace became the sign of a locked closeness through slow, intimate years. A first sweet summary of delight to come, one brevity intense of all long life, in a wide moment of two souls that meet, she felt her being flow into him, 
as in waves a river pours into a mighty sea, as when a soul is merging into God to live in Him forever and know His joy, and all her separate self was lost in His. As a starry heaven encircles happy earth, He shut her into Himself in a circle of bliss and shut the world into Himself and her. A boundless isolation made them one. He was aware of her enveloping him and let her penetrate his very soul, as is a world by the world's spirit filled, as the mortal wakes into eternity, as the finite opens to the infinite. Thus were they in each other lost a while. Then drawing back from their long ecstasy trance, came into a new self and a new world. Each now was a part of the other's unity. The world was but the twin self-finding scene or their own wedded beings vast and free. On the high glowing cupola of the day, fate tied a knot with morning's hello threads, while by the ministry of an auspice hour, hard bound before the sun, their marriage fire, the wedding of the eternal Lord and spouse, took place again on earth in human forms. In a new act of the drama of the world, the united two began a greater age. In the silence and murmur of the Tamaril world and the mutter of the priest twins a sacred verse amid the choral whisperings of the leaves Loves twain had joined together and grew one. The natural miracle was wrought once more. In the immutable ideal world, one human moment was eternal night. Then, down the narrow path, where their lives had met, he led and showed to her her future world, love's refuge and corner of happy solitude. At the path's end, through a green cleft in the trees, she saw a clustering line of hermit roots and looked now first on her heart's future home, the thatch that covered the life of Sattvan. Adorned with creepers and red climbing flowers, it seemed a sylvan beauty in her dreams, slumbering with brown body and tumbled hair, in a chamber inviolate of emerald peace. Around it stretched the forest's anchorite mood, lost in the depths of its own solitude. Then, moved by the deep joy, she could not speak. A little depth of it, quivering in her words, her happy voice cried out to Sattvan, my heart will stay here on this forest verge and close to this thatched roof while I am far. Now of more wandering it has no need. 
but I must haste back to my father's house, which soon will lose one loved accustomed trait and listen in vain for a once a cherished voice. For soon I shall return, nor ever again oneness must sever its recovered bliss. Or fate sunder our lives while life is ours. Once more she mounted on the carving car and under the ardor of a fiery noon, less bright than the splendor of her thoughts and dreams, she sped sweet rain, sweet hearted, but still saw in still lucidity subsides in her world through the cool, scented woods, luxurious gloom, on shadowy paths between great rugged trunks, paced towards a tranquil clearing Suttuban, a nave of trees enshrined the hermit patch, the new deep covert of our felicity, preferred to heaven, a soul's a temple and home. This now remained with her, her heart's constant scene.